we're live. Don't forget to like and subscribe for fun for the YouTube channel. Check out our website, soulchibajoy.ca. This is Rowan. Welcome back to a moment of joy. Mm -hmm. But we'll have to try and get it better. Tonight we're reading from Acts chapter 7, I believe, isn't it? Isn't it? Uh, yes. Stephen's speech to the Sanhedrin. Then the high priest asked Stephen, Are these charges true? To this he replied, Brothers, and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham while he was still in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran. Leave your country and your people, God said, and go to the land I will show you. So he left the land of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran. After the death of his father, God sent him to this land, where you are now living. He gave him no inheritance, not even enough ground to set his foot on. But God promised that he and his descendants after him would possess the land, even though at that time Abraham had no child. God spoke to him in this way. For 400 years, your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own. They will be enslaved and mistreated. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves. God said, and afterwards they will come out of that country and worship me in this place. Then he gave Abraham the covenant of circumcision, and Abraham became the father of Isaac, and circumcised him eight days after his birth. Later Isaac became the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of the twelve patriarchs. Because the patriarchs were jealous of Joseph, they sold him into slavery into Egypt, but God was with him and rescued him from his troubles. He gave Joseph wisdom, and enabled him to gain the goodwill of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So Pharaoh made him ruler over Egypt. Then famine struck all Egypt and Canaan, bringing great suffering to the ancestors who could not find food. When Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent our forefathers on their first visit. On their second visit, Joseph told his brothers who he was, and Pharaoh learned about Joseph's family. After this, Joseph sent his whole family, 75 in all. Then Jacob went down to the desert, where he and our ancestors died. Their bodies were brought back to Shechem and placed in the tomb that Abraham had bought from, his, from the son of Hamor at Shechem for a certain sum of money. As the time drew near, for God to fulfill the promise to Abraham, the number of our people in Egypt had greatly increased. Then a new king, whom Joseph meant nothing to, came to power in Egypt. He dealt treacherously with our people and oppressed our ancestors by forcing them to throw out their newborn babies so that they would not so that they would die. At that time, Moses was born, and he was no ordinary child. For three months he was cared for by his family. Then he was placed outside Pharaoh's place outside. Pharaoh's daughter took him and brought him up as her own son. And Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was powerful in speech and action. When Moses was 40 years old, he decided to visit his own people, the Israelites. He saw one of them being mistreated by an Egyptian. So he went to his defense and avenged him by killing the Egyptian. Moses thought that his own people would realize that God was using him to rescue them, but they did not. The next day, Moses came upon two Israelites who were fighting. He tried to reconcile them by saying, Men, you are brothers. Why do you want to hurt each other? But the man who was mistreating the other pushed Moses aside. Who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? When Moses heard this, he fled to Midian where he settled as a foreigner and had two sons. After 40 years, he pa had passed an angel appeared to Moses in the flames of a burning bush in the desert near Mount Sinai. 
When he saw this, he was amazed at the sight. And he said, and he went over to get a closer look. And he heard the Lord say, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses trembled in fear and did not dare to look. Then the Lord said to him, Take off your sandals, for this place you are standing on is holy ground. I have indeed seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their groaning. I have come and set them free. Now come, I will send you back to Egypt. This is the same Moses that they had rejected. With the words, Who made you ruler and judge? He was sent to be their ruler and deliverer by God himself through the angel who appeared to him in the bush. He led them out of Egypt and performed wonders and signs in Egypt at the Red Sea and for 40 years in the wilderness. This was the Moses who told the Israelites, God will raise up a prophet like me from your own people. He was in the assembly in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our ancestors who received the living word passed on to us. But our ancestors refused to obey him. Instead, they rejected him in their hearts and turned back to Egypt. They told Aaron, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who led us out of Egypt, we don't know what happened to him. That was the time they made an angel in the form of a calf. They brought sacrifices to it and reveled in what they, their own hands had made. But God turned away from them and gave them over to the worship of the sun and the moon and the stars. This agrees with what was written in the prophets. Did you bring me sacrifice and offerings? Forty years in the wilderness, people of Israel. You have taken up the tabernacle of Moloch, the star of the god Rephim, the idols you made to worship. Therefore, I will send you into exile beyond Babylon. Our ancestors had the tabernacle of the covenant of the law with them in the wilderness. It had been made as God directed Moses according to the pattern he had seen. After receiving the tabernacle, our ancestors under Joshua brought it with them, and they took the land from the nations God drove out before them. It remained in the land until the time of David, who enjoyed God's favor and asked that he might provide a dwelling place for the God of Jacob. But it was Solomon who built the house for him. However, the Most High does not live in a house made by human hands. As the prophet says, Heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or where will my resting place be? Has not my hand made these things? You stiff-necked people, your hearts, your ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. You who have received the law that was given through the angels have not obeyed it. We're not in this section in your law for you people. Go ahead, Mark, we what we're saying. That is a section of that was Stephen's speech to the Sanhedrin. Tomorrow we find out how the Sanhedrin responds to Stephen's speech. Do you have any other questions? Is it going to be another verses? No, it's like four verses. That's a fine question. And, and, any other questions? No. No questions about Stephen's speech. No, like I couldn't comprehend any of it. So, okay, here's the short answer. He said to the people that were judging him, God has been with you from the beginning and you've rejected him over and over again. You rejected Moses, you rejected the prophets, and you rejected Jesus. You killed all the prophets, you killed Jesus, because you don't really believe in God. That's what he said. Uh, I have an idea. What's that? Uh, how about next time we have a giant section that may be hard to comprehend? Yeah. How about if you under, can get a short version, you can explain the short version after? Yeah. Well, that's what I just did. Yeah. Okay. Any prayer requests? No. All right. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have sent the prophets. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your Bible. We pray that we respond to your word. 
We pray that we accept Jesus and we follow him instead of wanting to do our own things and go our own ways. We love you, Lord Jesus. This we pray, Lord Jesus Christ's name. Amen. All right, we'll see you tomorrow evening at 8.30 for another moment of joy. And don't forget, this Wednesday, we're doing a corn roast out at 89 East Quarter Line. So come and get some free corn. All right, see you then. Bye-bye.